Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are summarizing the deal making year 2023 and what lies ahead in the new year. Zia Modi and Salil Pitle are in discussion. Now, Zia, you earlier mentioned about the MNA. MNA overall has been muted for this year and uh, have been much smaller uh, than many other years in the past. But you did mention that domestic MA did see a little bit of pickup. How do you see this? What stands out for you? And for the next year, are we having a stronger pipeline than what we saw in 2023? I think you're on mute, Zia. I said, I think that's definitely the hope. Uh, we are already seeing the green shoots of more deal activity on the PE side. Uh, much more ideation, much more opportunities. Uh, we are also seeing uh, much more of an auction process rather than exclusivity, simply because so many people are chasing fewer deals. On the domestic side, I think our corporate houses are smelling out uh, opportunities where smaller industries may be undergoing some promoter challenges, uh, fighting between the families, uh, not being able to really increase or scale up because of CapEx issues and identifying those opportunities and bolting them on and, and, and sort of putting them into their uh, entire ecosystem and world. I think the digital space will continue see, to see more activity hmm. and the fintech space is not to be written off. Yes. Uh, you look at the UPI payment uh, record that the government published. You're looking at uh, 92 crore transactions in 1718 to 8,375 8, crore transactions in 2223. That's just crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And so all this will require back ended support. And then you look at logistics data centers, the need for power, the requirement of localization, infrastructure in general leading up to the elections. So there has to be m &A activity for that. I think airports, ports, uh, all these will start uh, developing much more in the next two, three years, according to me. Oh, so you mentioned uh, many such uh, themes that could develop. And one theme that really came out emphatically this year was the hospitals deal and it carries forward to the next year as well. Uh, Zia, how is the corporate mood as we enter into 2024 and especially of the large conglomerates? My view is it's positive. Uh, if you just look at what they've been doing, if you look at Tata, as you can see the M&A that they've been doing, the IPO, as you say, Tata Motors is on a high steel is doing well, chemicals is doing well, TCS. I mean, you know, the house is just doing well. Uh, if you look at Reliance, you see that uh, they've done a blockbuster of a listing with Geo Financial Services. They've made clear that they want to be very high on energy. Um, I don't think there's any uh, area in which they don't want to foray. And once they foray, they are a force to reckon with, disruptive in their excellence of execution. And then you have Birla's. Uh, Kumar is looking, I think, at a lot more areas. He's looked at paints. He's certainly not forgotten cements by any stretch of imagination. Yes. And then you have the Adani group that is uh, still acquiring and yes. being active. So uh, I don't see why that deal activity should stop, provided the prices are right. And so far, I think, uh, even though the stock market is a unholy euphoria, uh, <laughs> I think that... Uh, as long as uh, the stock market is stable, people's sentiments to be able to pay more for a deal will be there. Unholy euphoria, you said it, uh, Zia Modi and uh, Salil. Uh, add to that, uh, of course, it gave a lot of opportunities, lot of blocks, lots of IPOs, and people are happy, investors in general are happy with stock markets. But the flip side is that it did mute and suppress the M&A stream to a large extent. In fact, a lot of private equity players tell me that it's becoming very difficult to strike a deal in the private market because private market and public market valuations uh, have a huge gap now. 
true what you're saying is right uh, nisha uh, private markets got the competition from public markets because you know public markets were keen to deploy and there was therefore loss of deal from private to public uh, but you know what could also play out as we go along and i'll refer to what zia said a little earlier was uh, this encashment on private equity today uh, through exits on some of their portfolio companies ensures that there will be a stronger flow of capital back to private equity in india uh, especially some of the top tier ones uh, and that will be vying for deployment so you would see good quality deployment coming from the private markets uh, maybe competing stronger uh, for situations a lot more buyout activity can bet get driven by private equity who wants to deploy a larger amount of capital today in the indian context so you might see a comeback of private equity driven amni opportunities coming out in the next calendar year for sure uh, i think uh, the other part is that with the richer set of valuations for public mar for public market companies and corporate india in general uh, it creates a stronger currency again available for doing acquisitions yes uh, so you would, you would uh, so i i thematically a few things will happen uh, there will be uh, well built businesses who are looking at a generational change and the next generation probably wants to be mm. let's say a family office rather than run the business so there are quality businesses which could change hands and could go to either private equity or to corporate india both have the currency to be able to do these acquisitions mm. there's a second category category of amini which will happen in india is that you know the 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 younger companies the new age tech companies saw a bit of wind funding winter coming in yes. which means that capital not necessarily available for them now not all of them are uh, 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 are can be painted in the same brush because there are some very good quality companies who may not have got the access to capital which will get acquisition which has which has the access to buyers who have capital to do that so we were we are fairly enthused that we also see these kind of amine themes uh, you know coming out over the next year or so yes. and you know a euphoric market is always a currency for uh, doing these acquisitions a uh, point well made uh, there salil final word to you is your modi and very quick answer expected uh, market regulator tightening its news on various sectors your view on that the regulator is concerned as always and as it should be uh, i think that uh, possibly a slightly softer touch uh, would be appreciated by the market i think the regulator is concerned about any opacity asymmetry of information and to make sure that the public shareholder is basically well informed and gets its due i think the cost of regulatory compliance has just shot up oh. and uh, there are sometimes many honest mistakes Yes. Uh, and those have to be recognized i think as just honest mistakes right. and to move on. all right uh, thank you so much zia modi as well as sal pitre for giving us important takeaways and also crystal gazing into what lies ahead for deal making in 2024 expected to be a robust year thank you so much uh, for joining us right here on cnbc tv 18 and thanks to all our viewers for tuning in <laughs>